Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of ML machine learning, or just remember that ML is always machine learning in mathematics. Part two of, I have no idea, we'll see. Um, so I'm learning this while I'm giving those lecture series, which is kind of nice, so we'll see how far we can go. But essentially, I ask AI to give me a list of potential topics. It's a very fitting, give me a list of potential topics, and I'm at least going to um, discuss those. And the idea is, this time I say it straight out, that I'm talking about machine learning in mathematics. I'm not going to talk about the mathematics of machine learning. So if you're looking for to learn machine learning, that that's excellent. You should, everyone should nowadays, I guess. Um, various versions of AI will play a very important role. It's not difficult to, well, of course I could be wrong. Nobody can, knows the future, but it's, it's somewhat not very difficult to predict. Um, anyway, I'm not doing that, right? I'm doing the opposite. I'm trying to explain kind of the state of the arts of machine learning with kind of the litmus test given by mathematics because mathematics is like the science of reasoning. That's at least what mathematicians will tell you. Um, let's just go for that. Let's just claim mathematics as a science of reasoning and let's just see what mathematics can do in machine learning. No, the other way around. What machine learning can do in mathematics. And probably the most successful application so far, or at least uh, the one that made kind of the biggest impact, had the biggest impact, um, is Alpha Tensor. It's AI and matrix multiplication. So if you Google Alpha Tensor, so uh, everything will be reasonably interactive, I hope. So if you Google Alpha Tensor, you will find a block, a, a block, a block by Google's DeepMind. So kind of fun fact, Google DeepMind is probably, maybe, not so quite sure, but anyway, kind of one of the leading um, think tanks when it comes to machine learning, applied to various various forms of sciences, also mathematics. Um, yeah, and they had this discovery of new algorithms with AlphaTensor, and I'm going to discuss that, and we're kind of going to through this site a little bit. Um, isn't this zoomed in? I'm very annoyed by this. So uh, we zoom in here. Uh, so we'll see what that actually is. So uh, Alpha Tensor, uh, from when is Alpha Tensor? Well, we can figure that out. Chat GPT, right? This is, this is GPT. It's all, um, it's all machine learning, all AI, right? So when did the Alpha Tensor paper appear? I, I could do this differently, obviously. And by the way, I also need, don't need to learn spelling. The Alpha Tensor apparently in 2022. I somehow can't believe that this is true. I thought it was older. But anyway, we believe AI, right? So we, we go for it. So it's fairly recent anyway. So that, that's that's fine. Um, yeah. So that was one of the biggest things we've seen so far. And let me explain essentially what they did and why it is important. Turns out that the humans can still do better. It is a bit annoying. Um, but somehow that's, that's kind of the state of the arts of machine learning. And the shocking insight here, so if you're just a, kind of a classical mathematician, um, here comes a shocking insight. You can turn off the video afterwards. The rest will be, will be AI. Not quite, but anyway. So kind of the shocking insight is um, the matrix multiplication, as you learn it in school, or it depends a bit where you learn, where you actually, or when you actually learn matrix multiplication. Let's say in school, and uh, maybe in university, but eventually you'll learn matrix multiplication. And obviously, if you're now thinking, what is matrix multiplication, then this video is not quite the right thing for you. I'm happy if you just click off. Anyway, the matrix multiplication that you learn, the naive one, uh, like this guy here, is not optimal. And this is like a shock. So this was a, a shock in the sense of academia, so nobody really cared. But anyway, a shock in the sense of academia when this was uh, discovered in the 1970s by um, a mathematician called Strassen, um, the matrix multiplication is not optimal. And what do I mean by that? Well, the, the standard matrix multiplication needs eight multiplications. Yeah? So you can literally count them. Here's one, here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we ignore the additions. The matrix addition is, is fairly straightforward. So we only count the multiplications. So you need eight of them. And Strassen found a rearrangement, which, which you don't need to look at. You just need to observe that it's fairly complicated, such that you only need seven operations, uh, seven multiplications. So here P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7. So here we have eight 
No, this is an this is a not readable eight. Um, let me put it here. Eight. This is also not a readable eight, but this is now my my fault. So let me try again. Eight. And here we have a seven. Um, by the way, you should be able now to tell where I learned handwriting by looking at my seven because it kind of is different from country to country. Just a fun fact. Um, okay, so you have those seven multiplications. So eight versus seven. So you save one multiplication. And yeah, and, and if you look at just this funny list here, it's, it's very long and how you need to rearrange it. And it's pretty tricky. It's not quite clear why that should actually be very impressive to save one operation on a two by two matrix. Yeah? But the point here is that you can now call it recursively. And in each recursion step, you save one operation. That's kind of the whole point, right? So imagine now you're not talking about a two by two matrix, but let's say you have a two by n times two by n matrix and you multiply them out in essentially the same way I just renamed whatever it was, uh, P to S, Probably just because I stole one of the pictures and I did one of them myself. So then you just rename things. Anyway, so here's a matrix multiplication. These were the P's from before. And these are now matrices, they're not entries anymore. And you still only need seven of them. And then you can kind of call it recursively by just always do it to over two, over two, over two, over two. Yeah. So let's say this is some kind of a two by two, two to the n times two to the n. So this kind of converges like nicely down to the kind of start of the recursion. Yeah, so then what actually will happen, and I have a nice illustration in a second, that the standard multiplication will just need n cubed operations because the this one three is just log two eight, right? Eight multiplications, you have two by two matrices log two eight. So you just need n cubed operations, and that's just what it is. But now you save one operation in each iteration, so you actually only need log two seven, which is like two point eight. Uh, kind of operations but in the exponent and that's what makes it so much smaller right n cubed versus n to the 2.8 that's quite a difference actually already so this uh, quite difficult looking type of multiplication thing turns out to be very useful if you only save one operation and you do it recursively and kind of a nice picture that I always have in mind by, by this this by the way called divide and conquer for divide and conquer, why this is always so impressive, just saving one operation saves you a lot of time, is that it is really a fractal type thing. I mean, this is now just two dimensional, it's n squared and not n cubed, but you can probably imagine, it should be easy to imagine this three dimensional one. Right? So this is n cubed, right? This is just a square, obviously, you just have n, n cubed operations, that's what it is, a filled out square. And now let's say we save one operation, so instead of four operations, we just need three operations. And you already saved a little bit, right? You just saved a little block here, fine. So you save one out of four operations. But the, the key comes now into the game that you call this recursively. So for every of those, oh no, I can't draw here. So for every of those three little blocks, you can again save one operation. And for all the remaining blocks, you can save one operation. And for the remaining blocks, you save one operation. And it will actually become this a uh, fractal type structure which has a way look how, how much white space there is a way smaller area than the thing we started with and this is why this is so powerful so recursion if you save kind of an operation in a recursion even if it's just a simple stupid operation this kind of blows up and makes it well the, the opposite of blows up <laughs> kind of blows up and makes the algorithm so much faster and this is what uh, Strassen did and this is what kind of shocked pe people essentially that you can make matrix multiplication significantly faster. And nowadays most, um, like, like Python or something, most have, should have this built in for at least larger matrices. Because this is really a large difference between 3 and 2.8 in the exponent of n. That is actually quite a difference. Yeah? Um, and then people were asking the naive question, you know, kind of the, the reasonable question. I mean, this is pretty complicated. And you can actually so show for two by two matrices you can't do better. So for two by two matrices you can have at least seven multiplications. But if you do a three by three matrix thing and you save maybe more operations, maybe you can actually do better. Or a four by four matrix thing, or a five by five, right? This is just a recursion start and you just do it on a large matrix anyway. So it doesn't really matter how large your recursion start is in some sense. 
And yeah, so why don't we use this for larger matrices? That's exactly, right? Why don't you start it instead of two by two? Why don't you do whatever, three by three, four by four, or whatever it is, right? So just as an example, if you would do this for three by three matrices, and let's say you save seven operations, then you would have log 320 in this recursion, so you already brought it down to 2.7 instead of 2.8. And this makes a, like a large difference. And then you would like to do it for four by four matrices. Maybe you saved, God knows, X operations and whatever. But if you look, just look back, or K by K, if you just look back on already the two by two case, it's kind of a non-trivial, non-trivial thing to find this. So people tried very hard and there were many, many kind of partial results known for whatever, five by five matrices, three by three matrices, you get the gist. But um, yeah, but it looks pretty difficult. And that's exactly where people thought, so the, the brilliant idea by DeepMind is that the machine, uh, should be maybe able to do better just by essentially somehow smartly combining operations until you kind of saved a lot of operations. So they trained a model using reinforcement learning, played a game, and just very, very successful. We see that on, on the next page. So they trained this model using reinforcement learning. It's kind of the keywords here. So reinforcement learning is something that is like very successful in mathematics. Reinforcement learning is the idea of you have an agent, yeah, whatever, a dog, you wait until the agent gives an action and if you like that action, you give it a reward, right? So that's how you would train a dog. And then you just repeat, 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 repeat. That's what you usually do in, in machine learning, you just repeat, repeat. So essentially what you can do, you can let AI play a game where the AI gets a reward if it does well in whatever you want it to do well, like you save operation. Um, a famous example of reinforcement learning, which is not quite related to mathematics, is, for example, essentially any game a computer was kind of trained to learn in the past few years is somehow based on some version of reinforcement learning. For example, StarCraft II, so also DeepMind, they uh, trained the model using reinforcement learning to play StarCraft II, and it was like so successful, like if it does the right operation, you give it a, a little reward, and eventually it was so successful it was kind of, uh, it was, was, um, kind of beat all the competition, uh, co compet competitive. So StarCraft 2 was played at that time in, on a competitive level and eventually the AI was just able to beat all the competitive players. It was kind of very successful. And this idea in mathematics has turned out to be crucial. Kind of to, to kind of formulate your question as a game, give the AI rewards if it, if it does well and the AI will kind of try to then optimize uh, whatever kind of thing you want to optimize, like playing StarCraft 2, or kind of finding, uh, kind of removing operations from matrix multiplication. And it did really well. So this is uh, the famous Alpha Tensor paper. Right? So Alpha Tensor, or Alpha Tensor is I think not the name of the paper, but the name of the project. Well, we'll go to the website in a second. They will tell us what they call it. Anyway, they, they, they kind of run it on, on many, many things. And the most successful one they had is on five by five matrices with only 76 operations. And then you do something like log 576 and you have to something like 2.69. Yeah? And yeah, we'll have a look at the list of relations in a second, but essentially the point is that you don't want to look. Um, but let's, let's, just, let's just do it. So yeah, this was very unsuccessful. So um, this is exactly the web page, and they did very well. And they explain here what is standard matrix multiplication. Hopefully, we all know that this is now the Strassen algorithm, like seven calls instead of the standard eight. Yeah. And then they trained the model, and eventually, um, somewhere on five by five matrices, they well found this list of seventy-six different. Oh God, different operations with somewhere here 76 different operations that will save quite a bit of time and yeah so 76 multiplications which improved this type of algorithm so people have done it as i said already by hand and as far as i remember they say that somewhere um so 80 was a record by hand on five by five matrices so far so this is what usually ai can do right it can kind of improve something humans were already able to do and they uh, kind of exploited or exploited that in in this example like like very very nicely 
um, related plots. Uh, well, maybe we go there later. Yeah? So that's kind of the point. Don't look at the, at the list. It's just what it is. But again, AI essentially only improves upon what human can do at the moment in mathematics. And this is one of the examples. So they found faster versions of the stress and algorithm, um, but we actually know even faster. So we'll zoom in this picture in a second. But usually the even faster ones they actually use different methods. So like from like from group theory. And they're not they're not really that practical. So another upshot here is that the algorithm they produce, so Strassen's algorithm is like kind of the gold standard at this point, should be implemented on whatever type of machine you use. And the algorithm they produce here should be useful in practice as well. I haven't quite double checked whether anyone actually really implemented it in practice. Probably yes, but I haven't double checked. So this should be useful in practice. Um, all of the other algorithms here, the, the newer ones, which are faster, we zoom in in a second, they are so-called galactical, which means that, yeah, they are be better in, in theory, but you need so large matrices because of the overhead. So because it needs to get a little bit of time to actually become faster. So they are not really of practical importance. They are more of theoretical importance. So in that sense, they might have actually speed up matrix multiplication, which is kind of fun because matrix multiplication is one of the crucial facts that makes AI, that is AI needs to be good. Right? There are a lot of matrix multiplications usually involved. So in some sense, AI improved itself um, if you want. Let us just zoom in now on this picture a little bit more. So it's kind of a, one of my favorite Wikipedia pages is matrix multiplication. And do I need to learn spelling? No, I don't. That is the nice thing. Nowadays, you don't need to learn spelling anymore. Multiplication and probably complexity. So there's this, one of the complexity of matrix multiplication is one of the uh, main open problems in mathematics, theoretical computer science, whatever you want to want to call it. So people believe that it should be doable in uh, n squared, potentially n squared plus a little epsilon. So much, much better than n cubed or Strassen's algorithm. So people here did a lot. Yeah, here's yeah, so stress in the first one, whatever it was, 8.1. A little bit of improvement in the newer ones, they all use different methods. And as I can as I can tell, we can zoom in here. So we should be roughly around 2.3 at the moment. Yeah. But all of these are kind of, as far as I know, galactical, so they probably won't find any practical applications anytime soon. While the one here from Alpha Tensor might actually be useful in in practice so anyway so people suspect that it's n to the 2 plus epsilon and we are what, what did i say we are like at uh, n to the 2.3 ish at the moment and alpha tensor gave us n to the 2.7 ish i guess but this is practical so this is kind of and this is not so practical anyway so kind of ai approved matrix multiplication which is a really cool example actually Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.